a short, funny looking, uh, straight edge, angry, vegan antagonist. It's not always so easy to be in other parts of the country. So I'm happy to be here and happy to be with y'all. Uh, thank y'all for having me. And that sh wasn't that showcase ridiculous? <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't mention that all of us being here tonight is, is a lot cooler than us being separate in front of a TV somewhere, not talking. So, along the lines of that feeling of friendship and uh, willingness to speak to strangers, which is not always there in the Northeast, um, kind of got me thinking, you know? I, uh, I wasn't sure about whether or not I believed in God when I was a teenager, and then after I became a social worker, I was pretty sure that I didn't at all. <laughs> But, you know, so I don't really believe in God or magic, but I, I do necessarily believe in the idea that uh, if something bad enough happens in a certain place that can affect uh, that place or a particular object, like maybe sickness or, or pain can, can stick with an object. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about that idea, it, it made me think about New England, um, mm -hmm. you know, the cold demeanor of the people a lot of the time and the cold weather. Uh, it, it's, it's cold enough to die in New England so many times, sometimes between November and, uh, and March. And it really got me to think, like, you know, New England is the staging point for the invasion of what they decided to call America. Uh, you know, the genocide of a whole culture and the beginning of not, not necessarily the first empire to try to rule the world, but the first one to really set up bases everywhere and begin poisoning everything. So, winter in New England. Maybe it's, it's, it's a reflection, maybe it's something that happened there that got stuck. So, I wrote this after thinking about that. It goes like this, it goes. Slavery wasn't that long ago, and Africa isn't that far away, regardless of what the television wants me to believe. Slavery wasn't that long ago, Darfur isn't that far away, no matter what my drunk Uncle Steve tries to tell me. Man. Slavery wasn't that long ago. New Orleans isn't that far away, even if the newspapers write it like that. Slavery wasn't that long ago. It still goes on today. I said it still goes on today. I said it still goes on today. And winter in New England has a way of closing in, piercing home and skin to bones of thought where hope is thin. You know my fingers are broke, bleeding, and swollen, force folded to grip hips of a history lost and out of focus. Mm. Through the foundation and chimney brick to the very wood of the stairs and shelves, the cradle of the revolution was paid for with slavery, just like everything else. Mm. For the past 400 years, Boston has been the largest New England city charter. It's like the capital with guarded bays and armored harbors where docks of cargo-laden ships live. Picture red sock and brownstone riches, little league and family value plated wishes. Four whole centuries to nurture, mold, and shape a city. Still one of the more racist places north of the Mason Dixon. Winter in New England wants me to believe that patriots were more than just platelets used up to clock blood flow on the front lines, that civil war was more than toxic glue supplied to steal gas and force a country close at crunch time. Like it was more moral and less money, but it's the same. Me first state of mind that first crossed the Atlantic and massacred native inhabitants to leave the old place behind. It's stuck beneath the skin, even when some people try to forget and move on. But sometimes when something that evil happens for so long, the hatred stays after the deed is done and grows strong. Radiation increasing in deceiving increments with each and every generation's toil permeating the air and the water and the soil and the people to it boils under in resounding waves of apathy and emotional numbness, hiding behind unnecessary sarcasm and dark laughs. It strengthens in isolation and refuses to smile in public or make eye contact, like something's broken inside, but the hole still seems to be running right through a chill in the air, flooded with gray afternoons, and quickly comes the night. The sun is a stranger, and a month of Mondays you might have seen it once or twice. Winter in New England has a way of closing in to surround the facts and then begins folding quick like 
street corner carved sharp platforms, and then, when once again their tables open bid, there's only clean white hands holding golden fiddles with glowing strings. They slowly drizzle no known sin opuses, honey thick over broken, swollen skin. Then whatever they write in the books is history, specifically planned off and orderly with enough fancy in the paint brush to reminisce the old Lord colorblind, but they still prone to only shade in one side of the story. Some maybe fought with the fault to end slavery, but more wanted to prove bravery and find glory. The fact is that most Yankees from New York to Maine didn't give a fuck about injustice or black people's pain. They weren't concerned with equal rights or even decent pay. They was just pissed the South up and quit in the middle of the game and happened to be led by those phony philanthropic supposed anti-colonialists smart enough to pass off their campaign as some sort of righteous crusade. Not only was Confederate secession disrespectful, it would have also led to a tremendous loss in revenue. Allowing the other side to stop and fall do over when they're obviously already behind is something that's just not done. Especially when your team owns all the factories that stock the guns. Gotcha. A lot of people see it. I ain't special and I know I'm not the first. But if what goes around comes around until the problem is reversed, then maybe all the ground around us will always be blind, bound, and cursed. Mm. Oh, yeah.